Well, thank you for joining us once again on our wonderful day in the Lord broadcast. As we look at the promises of God in, the, in our bigger uh, theme that we've been looking at for several weeks, and, and uh, in particular this week, looking at the promises of God related to times uh, when we, we have been offended or harmed by other people, when people have wronged us. And unfortunately, in a world like ours, that happens. It happens in general. It happens at work. It happens in the family. It happens at church. It happens uh, among our friendships. And we're looking at those together. We're turning to Psalm 56 today, and we're looking at, at another situation that he gives us here as, as when we've been wronged by enemies. When people who are against us, or we could call them foes in this passage, who actually want to harm us on purpose. Now, many times we're offended and harmed by people who didn't necessarily mean to do that, at least not intentionally, but did so anyway, and maybe they don't care. But there are people in our lives, unfortunately, who really don't care at all and who would like to harm us, would like us, like to overthrow us for various reasons. And Psalm 56 addresses that. Let's look at a few verses, starting with verse 1. Be gracious to me, O God, for man has trampled upon me all day long. An attacker oppresses me. My foes have trampled upon me all day long, for many attack me proudly. So now we have a very mean-spirited person uh, who really wants to do us harm. Uh, I've heard of people like that in the workplace. Somebody goes to work and there's an individual there who just simply wants to make your life miserable. We know that happens in schools. Uh, for young people, for example, there's a bully there. Or there's somebody who just simply does not like you and they're going to make your life miserable. Uh, this could happen, in, unfortunately, in our homes, our families, our friendships. So it can happen. We have this antagonistic individual who is trampling. That's the way he, he says it, trampling upon us. That's a pretty mean-spirited picture, isn't it? Someone really wanting to, wanting to stomp us into the ground. Well, verse 5, he says, all day long they distort my words. Here's a particular way they're doing it. All their thoughts are against me for evil. They attack, they lurk, they watch my heels as they are have hope to take my life. So in this situation, at least for uh, the psalmist, this individual really wants to go to the, to the nth degree and actually take the life of this individual. You probably do not have that situation but you might have the other, they're distorting your words. So you've said something, somebody's taken that, distorted it, gone out and, uh, and spread gossip or slander about you. That's harmful, isn't it? That's painful to know that you really have no defense. And sometimes you don't even know that your words have been distorted to someone else. But, uh, but this is what's happening to this individual. They attack and they lurk, they watch my head. So they're looking for opportunities to um, hurt you, to take your words and distort them. Uh, and that not only hurts other people, but, but you find out other people now don't like you <laughs> because of what somebody else says you said. But when we find out about things like that, that's very painful, isn't it? And so we have a situation in which uh, a foe, somebody who really doesn't like you, is intentionally causing you harm. But uh, we want to get to the promise of God in relationship to that. And we drop down to verse 8 for that. You have taken account of my wanderings. Now he's talking about God. You, you know my wanderings. You know that I'm stumbling around because of this circumstance. Put my tears in your bottle and, and there, are they not in your book? This is a comforting set of promises. The Lord knows that you are hurting. The Lord knows somebody has trampled on you, distorted your words, intentionally harmed you. He knows that. He knows that it's brought you great discomfort. So that apparently we, in this circumstance, there's tears. And, uh, and he says, you take those tears and put them in your bottle. That, what a beautiful way of saying that God is, is, has seen your agony. He has seen your tears. He's seen uh, how much this has hurt you. And he treasures those things. He's, He's put them in your in his bottle, so to speak, to, to see them, to, to know they're there. And he's put them in his book. He's not oblivious to your pain. He's not looking the other way as other people trample on you. He, he deeply, deeply cares about what you're going through. 
verse 9, he says, Then my enemies will turn back in the day when I call. This I know, that God is for me. So his, his hope now is not in himself and maybe his uh, ability to unravel all this ugliness that's gone on. His hope is in the Lord. His hope is, is knowing that he will be able to call upon the Lord in this day of trouble. And when he does, he knows that God is for him. Again, we're looking at the promises of God. God does not always promise to, to, do, to do away with enemies, to, to fix every circumstance of life that's come against us, but he has promised to care and he has promised to be for us. God is always for, always for his children, never against them. That should give us great comfort because in the, at the ultimate doings, the ultimate time, God is for us and God will unravel these things. These things will not shake us as we saw yesterday because he cares. He puts our tears in his bottle. He writes our words in his book and he is for us. That's the promise of God. That should give us a wonderful day in him.